Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday, the 3rd of August. Here we are in the Atlantic. Uh, we have Tropical Storm Ernesto that has now developed over here, entering the Caribbean past the Antilles Islands last night. We also have this area of thunderstorms in the Bahamas that the NHC has now circled and are making folks aware of. And there, it's a, the northern part of the tropical wave that was out ahead of uh, Ernesto here in the Caribbean. The northern part split off into a surface trough and this is generating thunderstorms underneath an upper level trough with cold air aloft that is making things unstable. This shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, just regular tropical wave weather bringing heavy uh, thunderstorms and rain into northern Florida and the southeast U.S. coast during the next couple of days. And uh, This is not a big deal for them per se but it's interesting in that it's going to be hanging around here for the next uh, several days and basically represent the weakness in the ridging over the eastern Gulf of Mexico uh, that is going to be affecting Ernesto down the road here once he gets into the western Caribbean as uh, low pressure sets up in here representing the weakness in the ridge there. Uh, now if we look at Ernesto here it is and it's moving very fast just last night uh, 12 hours ago it was uh, still approaching Barbados it's already well into the eastern Caribbean now and uh, moving rapidly westward at over 20 miles per hour and you can see the circulation is right here it's very small and if it's closed it's very weakly closed we didn't even get a wind shift at the island of Grenada right here as the center went by St. Vincent just to the north we didn't even get a westerly wind at Grenada so the circulation if it's closed is very small small and uh, it is tight for now um, but it's racing off here notice how strong these low-level clouds here are moving from right to left here in the Central Caribbean uh, Ernesto is now entering this trade wind flow that we've talked about it weakened a few days ago but like I said it has come back strongly and uh, this is going to be a problem because these systems that come through here with weak circulations uh, can easily uh, be destroyed basically by such a fast flow because it's hard to get convergence going and hard to keep the circulation sustaining itself. We may even see Ernesto still try to open up into an open wave with no westerlies on the southern side at some point during the next couple of days. Now the NHC, if we put up the forecast here, uh, you can see the track, uh, but what it has is it has Ernesto approaching hurricane status as it nears the longitude of Jamaica and I just don't buy this yet. I still think uh, that this flow in the Caribbean is way too fast to allow a lot of strengthening and you can see how much sinking air there is because of this flow. There's a lot of dry air to the west of Ernesto uh, which is getting entrained and also causing problems uh, but uh, this flow is way too fast for this to really intensify and I think the status quo in terms of intensity is going to be the rule for the next two days or so at least if not some slight weakening of the circulation as it comes through here and the global models agree with this not really showing any intensification. The only models that show intensification are the hurricane models which can sometimes have problems feeding back in situations like this when they shouldn't. Um, and even they aren't really ramping it up this much. It's the t statistical models that are really uh, getting this going as it gets into the Caribbean here. I do agree that when it gets into the Northwest Caribbean, strengthening will probably occur uh, due to the favorable conditions we talked about yesterday that should develop here as this upper level trough currently here starts backing away to the west, allowing upper level ridging upper level ridging to balloon over this area will likely help Ernesto down the road but until then until it gets to Jamaica I don't think it's really strengthening much and uh, this is not going to be as strong as the Hurricane Center currently thinks it is and now this is important because the intensity is a very large factor probably the largest for this particular storm in uh, what its track is going to be like a stronger system strengthening as the hurricane center suggests uh, becoming a hurricane near Jamaica and moving on like this is going to try to curve north here into the weakness that will be waiting in the Gulf of Mexico and uh, this would make it a bigger problem for the United States down the road for Texas or Louisiana because it would take advantage of that weakness however if it follows more in line with what I think should happen and what the global models basically support by saying this isn't going to deepen it could remain on a westerly track for a longer time will probably still curve northwest but won't be feeling the trough as much over the eastern United States and uh, may just curve back westward across the Yucatan and uh, be a Mexico Bay of Campeche issue instead of United States issue. And now these are the model tracks that we see here. We still have a lot following the NHC, which the NHC is on top of the TVCN, which is the model consensus, which is uh, basically where they always go uh, with the model consensus on storms like this. And uh, you can see there's really not many 
off to the south here, but they have been shifting a little bit southward with time. In fact, the new 12Z Canadian is now into Mexico as well, and then the Bay of Campeche afterwards. The 12Z GFS is also in there. And the European, which I didn't put on here, still shows a very weak system moving into the southern Bay of Campeche across Central America. And it's interesting that the European has been consistent. The GFS has switched to the European solution, and now the Canadian has gone down there as well after being in the Bahamas a few days ago. So the general trend is southward and if we look at the GFS 500 millibar out to day six uh, we see that there's this trough of the eastern US that we talked about yesterday partially um, created by the pattern that's going on because of the typhoons in the western Pacific which I showed yesterday. Um, getting this trough going in the eastern US it's not all that strong but you can see the break in the ridge here and again the wild card could be the system in the Bahamas that will be moving in here hanging around basically representing uh, the low pressure in here because of the weakness in this ridge it should be here the weakness will be there uh, the problem is that it's not strong enough to bring just anything out of the Caribbean it has to be something that is going to uh, take advantage of the weakness, open it up, and move into it. Now, the GFS has the storm down here moving into northern Belize and uh, Yucatan, Mexico over here uh, to the west-northwest, and then it just moves into the Bay of Campeche and really doesn't go anywhere. Uh, it's weak, and uh, this is the reason it doesn't take advantage of the weakness and go northwest, is because it's weak, because it opens up into an open wave here on the model as it approaches Jamaica, and then, yes, it does try to try to strengthen it here. It starts moving northwest towards the weakness, but it doesn't have enough time to turn into a hurricane before it uh, moves into land here and uh, basically doesn't have anywhere left to go after that because we have the Texas heat ridge hanging back here ready to catch this again as soon as it weakens and uh, misses the weakness over here. And if it's still weak, if it's not a hurricane, by the time it gets into the Northwest Caribbean, it's probably not going to be a United States issue, but it's still a possibility I'm leaning more towards a solution like this where it comes to the northwest, hits the Yucatan, and then curves back into the northern half of Mexico with time. Uh, given that uh, the trade wind flow here just is very, very strong, and the storm probably isn't going to be able to strengthen very much until it gets to this part of the Caribbean. It will start feeling the weakness, uh, but the northern half of Mexico and the Yucatan may be what ultimately gets this system if it can't strengthen uh, more than it seems like it should right now. now uh, if it does, then we're going to have a bigger problem in the Gulf of Mexico because of the favorable conditions and more time over water. So this possibility is still open, and we're still talking about a long-range forecast here several days out. Uh, so a lot of things can change. A lot of things have already changed over the last few days in terms of what the models have shown and to the pattern that we're dealing with. Uh, but in general, this isn't a huge issue until it gets into the Western Caribbean, where it could strengthen and become a bigger problem for Mexico and the Yucatan in here. And then after that, either Mexico on the other side or the Northwest Gulf of Mexico, if it is strong enough to catch that weakness. Um, right now, we will see which way it goes. We have a few days to watch this to see how it organizes by the time it gets to Jamaica. We'll see if it's actually trying to become a hurricane by then and uh, we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.